Hey, how's it going guys? And welcome back to my channel. My name is James Pena and this channel is created to show you the hidden details of sleight of hand or just to even improve on what you may already know. Today we're going to be learning the spread call. The main thing about the spread call and the beauty of it is that it is extremely angle proof. So you don't really have to worry about people catching you out on it. And now the second thing comes in handy in certain situations like if you mess up or during like another performance or whatever the case may be. The spread call can be used to jazz things up just you know again in any scenario that may need it. So to get into today's video first I will be discussing the detailed mechanics of the spread call so you are doing this properly with the proper techniques. And although it is pretty much angle proof there is certain angles that you may want to work on so we're going to be going over to the angle sensitivity so you know exactly where to perform at. And lastly, and probably the most important thing, is we're going to be going over tips and subtleties to improve your handling and so you can be a little bit more proficient with it. Enough of me ranting, let's get into today's video. Let's get out your favorite deck of, ca favorite deck of playing cards and let's learn how to do the spread call. A lot of magicians already know what these, these are, but if you don't know, these are the Blue Monarchs by Theory 11. I keep the Jokers out of the deck because I don't really play with Jokers, but the it's basically just two of these and if you were wondering what the box looks like that's what the box looks like front and back be uh, but yeah blue monarchs if you are interested in them i will leave links down below on the theory 11 website and the art of play website so if uh you want to buy them they sell them in blue red green and i think a purple one as well so check that out if you want to so the spread call what is it so let's say they name i don't know the the six of spades right Come here, leave it somewhere in the middle, yada, yada, yada. And that's the spread call. How to do it. So we're gonna just flip this, put it somewhere in the middle. And now we're gonna use that as, a, as an instruction, instruction method. So we come here and let's say they pick this card, right? This face down card. What was it? The 10 of diamonds. They picked the 10 of diamonds. What you want to do is basically lay your finger on all three of these cards. So if the selection, the selection should be in the middle and you're gripping the two outside cards and that's pretty much it. And now on the back side with your middle, I'm going to show you here in a second, but with your middle and ring finger, you want to pull this playing card. Like right now, this is just my middle and ring finger, my right middle and ring finger kind of just pulls it. Now, it's right here at the top. But now as they expose you, we'll do the 10 of spades. So you come here, grip. Now on the back side, you're just doing this. You're pulling it. Avoid using the index finger, and I will get to that later on why you shouldn't use your index finger. But that is essentially what the call is. For the angle sensitivity, it is pretty angle proof but there's two things that you need to do to make it completely angle proof. The first thing, a uh, very common sense one, very obvious one, but, uh, but I feel like people overlook it, is to make sure when you call the card, so in this case the three of spades, call it, right, between this spread. So your goal, you see this little flash up here, you shouldn't have that, right? Call, right, without, breaking the spread right call within this realm of the spread just try to get used to it right make sure you're not calling like this right that would be pretty dumb right if you call it's it's okay to kind of call like this you shouldn't have to right but like let's say you call and it kind of comes out a little bit just try to just just try to fix it down here once you get to like the the bulk of the deck over here it's okay if it's kind of down here but when you're starting out Right, you want to make sure it's cold good so like that little flash right there unacceptable that is that is unacceptable you should try to do it within the spread and now i know you see some flashes up here but that goes on to my second thing for angle sensitivity so the reason why i tell you to only use the ring and middle finger is because your index finger when you're doing it is laying like that right it's not it's not up here it's not touching the top of the, the top of the deck but it's kind of like right here so when you pull that card right your index finger kind of covers that motion right and it's one less thing you have to worry about so just get used to only calling with the middle and the ring finger 
and that pretty much covers your angle sensitivity. Once you do those two things, you should be completely angle proof. Now for the tips and subtleties. Well, I actually only have two things to go over today, but they're really, really useful tips. Well, actually I actually have three, but I can only show you two. I'll talk about the third one last. The first thing I wanna go over and uh, is you don't have to call to the top or to the bottom, right? You can call to literally anywhere you want. So let's say if I wanted to do the two or diamonds, right? And let's say I want it to be, I don't know, let's find, let's go. so if I wanted it to be in between the jack and that four, it's now between that jack and that four, that two of diamonds. You can control it wherever you want. So perfect. So let's say if this is, you want to do a sandwich routine and let's say they're both aces. So let's pretend your aces are right there. Uh, they call out this uh, jack of, or wow, jack, queen of uh, spades. Call it, right? And then you can put it in between those two cards. So now it's right there. Uh, you don't have to do it for just a sandwich routine, right? It's kind of just an example, but call it wherever. I mean, I don't know if they say, if you have them name a card, right? Let's say the 10 of clubs and you're like, hey, just give me a number, right? And let's say, I don't know, it's a mnemonic stack and they say 23 and you know exactly what card is the 23rd position. You can call it there. You can do some false shuffles and then do an A can from right there. Kind of a little bonus little trick that I just gave you, but, um, but yeah, you could use it for things like that. So use the call to any location to your advantage. So the second thing I want to talk about is uh, calling more than one card. Now, I know how to call more than one card. No, I didn't buy Costa Kimlet's Roadrunner call, but I don't want to teach it in case that is how you do the Roadrunner call. And I don't want this video getting flagged for whatever reason and then the, the video getting taken down. Essentially, if you get, if you learn on your own how to do the Roadrunner call, if you come up with your own method, then by all means, I'm only telling you this so you know it's out there. Now, the reason why you may want to learn the Roadrunner call or a multiple call is for a variety of things. So like, let's say, I don't know, they name the four of clubs. You can now, right, get this four of clubs. And again, I'm not gonna really show you, but let's say you can now call all the fours, right? And then that four, and that was whatever that last one is. You can call all of these to the top in one go. By the time you're done spreading through the deck, you can get all the fours to the top and then do any type of production or you can, um, or you can, I don't know if that, let's say it's whatever, wherever the four of clubs was, let's pretend this is the four of clubs. You can do like a little shake and then produce all the fours, right? Something like that. Again, I'm only talking about this because it's really good to know. And it goes into my last subtlety is jazzing. Jazzing uh, essentially is just uh, something that's not really scripted. Like, you know how a lot of your routines are scripted, like, like let's say, a, an A-can, right? You're like, or not an A-can, uh, an ambitious card routine. You're like, oh, I'll grab this card, I'll put it somewhere here, yada, 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 and it's on top. Oh, I'll put it in the middle again, and it's on top, right? That's, uh, that was a really bad routine, but I'm just kind of just showing you that it's, it's more of a scripted thing that you kind of practice and come up with. But jazzing is like, let's say, something... The main thing is, you know, something goes wrong or if somebody, you've got to kind of, you're in a scenario where you kind of just got to work with what you got. So let's say somebody gives you a really trash deck and I don't know, it's hard to, to do a double lift or it's hard. I don't know. Your jazzing could literally be any scenario. So let's say, let's say you mess up. That's, that's a good scenario to work with and a good reason to use the spread call. So let's say you're doing a dribble peek and you see the jack of, uh, jack of diamonds, right? But let's say you wanted to control it, right? You control it, it's right there, but you accidentally push it and you're like, damn, what do I do now? At least right now, you know it's a jack of diamonds, but you know what? Let's even say you didn't peek the card, right? Let's pretend you didn't peek it at all and you do this, right? Do that and you accidentally put, shove it in. From here, don't be like, oh, I messed up. Use the call. Use the call to your advantage. You could just be like, hey, you know what? What's, um, 
What was your card? Actually, explain to me what your card was. Let's say they do, I don't know, Jack of Diamonds. We'll say Jack of Diamonds. All right? And you're like, okay, Jack of Diamonds, really? Okay, I just want you to see that it's somewhere here in the middle, right? And you can go straight to it. And be like, look, it's there, right? And then from here, call it to the second or the top. So, good way to control it. Or another thing that you can do is like, let's say you could do a, an, a very easy kind of vanish from here. So, what you can do, you do this, you do that, you mess up, ask them what the card is. Let's pretend they say the seven of diamonds. So, they'll say seven of diamonds. And you're like, okay, are you sure you picked the seven of diamonds? And they'll be like, yes, I'm sure I picked the seven. And you could easily just be like, well, I don't think I put that card in there this morning. And they're going to be like, what? So you yourself come and look. You see the seven, hide it, and now turn your hand and show them. Call, and now show one by one that the seven of diamonds is not there. And show this part slowly, right, the top part, because now you're going to square it all up. And show them this again right just to kind of reassure that it wasn't there and then from here they're gonna be like what it's gone so now you now you can control it but usually what I like to do if I mess up in a scenario like that is I go to not a card to pocket but like I'll just be like oh you know what I I let I put a card in my pocket this morning right it's not really a card to pocket but it's almost like I'm almost turns into like a mentalism thing kind of not really but kind of and then go straight into the pocket, pull this out, be like, yeah, I left this card in here this morning. And they're like, damn, you really did. And then you could empty out your pocket and nothing would be in there. Uh, really good subtlety. I, I don't know. I love the call in case I mess up. The call in case you mess up some type of control. Let's say you, you, you're trying to do like a DPS, right? And then for some reason you, you, you just forgot how to do it. Then the spread call is there for you in case you mess up. One last thing I want to go over is that just to kind of keep this in the back of your head, you can use the spread call when like the spread is face up or if the spread is face down. Now I know that may seem like common sense, but in certain advantages, advantages again, like we talked about in case you need to jazz things up or maybe you just want to apply it into a new routine, just know that you can do it both ways. So experiment with that, see what you can come up with and have a good time with it. That being said, to my new viewers, if this is the type of content that you like, then, you know, if you really want to, go ahead and hit subscribe and make sure you turn on the notification bell. To all my returning viewers, if there's something that you did not like, then please let me know in the comments and just so I know how I can improve to make your viewing experience a little bit better. But if you guys did like today's video, then go ahead and hit the like button just to show your support. One last thing, if there is something that you want me to teach, something that you've been kind of wanting to learn and you can't really get the hang of it and I haven't taught it yet, then leave it in the comments below so I can look at it. And if I'm able to teach it, then I will go ahead and probably teach it for next week's video. Well, that concludes today's video. So I will be seeing you guys all next week. So peace.